Alexandria, Egypt. 2,000 years ago, its port was the largest in the world, famous for its lighthouse, and a destination for hundreds of thousands of seafarers, traders, and travelers from all over the world. The port of Alexandria was the trade capital of the ancient world. But what happens when this legend takes on a modern day port icon? The port of Rotterdam, the largest in Europe. 150,000 ships and 470 million tons of cargo handled per year. A logistical masterpiece, possible only by using state-of-the-art technology and fully automated systems. Rotterdam is considered the port of the future. A contest between two mega hubs in the architecture category. Which port revolutionizes maritime trade? In the logistics category, which of the contenders enables the most handling of cargo? And in the features category, which port features the most state-of-the-art technology? Now, in Legends versus Modern Icons. Modern container ships and private yachts now dock in current-day Alexandria. More than 2,000 years ago, Alexander the Great constructed the largest commercial and military port in the world here. The huge seaport was almost four kilometers long and covered an area totaling 11 square kilometers. Experts believe up to 500 ships could anchor here at the same time, an absolute record. The port's capacity and trade turnover were unique in the ancient world. The port's landmark and one of the seven ancient wonders of the world is the Lighthouse of Pharos. State-of-the-art technology enabled its light to be seen from a distance of 50 kilometers. Through the port of Alexandria, Egypt has arisen to be one of the most important trading powers, and everyone has to be able to see this from afar. But how does this harbor legend compete with a modern icon? The Challenger, Europe's largest port, the port of Rotterdam. Over 90 terminals, 42 kilometers in length, and covering an area totaling 127,000 square kilometers. The port of Rotterdam is twice the size of Manhattan. It is unique in Europe, with deep water terminals of depths up to 24 meters. 15 million containers from all over the world are handled in Rotterdam every year. The port of Rotterdam is considered to be the gateway to Europe. The ancient port of Alexandria versus the port of Rotterdam, a contest of superlatives. We start with the category architecture. First, which port is ideally designed for shipping? Egypt in the year 332 BC. Alexander the Great conquered the country and shortly afterwards founded the city of Alexandria. He realized immediately that the bay before the new city was ideal as a major commercial and naval port. The biggest challenge facing engineers were the winds and currents off Egypt's Mediterranean coast. Depending on the season, it has strong easterly or westerly winds. Normally the wind on a coast comes from one direction and you arrange the walls and piers of a harbour accordingly. But at Alexandria you want all-round protection. One potential solution was a harbour basin completely surrounded by walls, as in Carthage, Utica or Rhodes. The disadvantage of such a construction was that the walls could be built only a few metres deep into the water due to technological restrictions. This meant such ports were relatively small. 
This was not good enough for the conqueror Alexander. His new magnificent capital was to have one of the largest ports in the world. So the architects had to come up with something completely new. The solution was to divide the bay into two halves with a mighty structure called the Heptastadion, a causeway from the mainland to the offshore island of Pharos, 1,200 meters long and 200 meters wide. This created the so-called double harbor with two huge, almost completely protected harbor basins. The east side of the causeway, the Portus Magnus, had an area of 600 hectares. The west side, Portus Eunostus, was around 400 hectares. A special feature was that ships could move from one port to the other via canals in the Heptastadion. A clever concept that made shipping in the port of Alexandria safe and uncomplicated. While the legend was created on a drawing board, the modern icon was developed over a 150-year period. Today, the port of Rotterdam extends from the city center to the North Sea coast. In the middle of the 19th century, the port of the commercial metropolis was located in the center of the city. To reach it, ships from the North Sea had to travel around 40 kilometers along the River Maas, a major time factor. Moreover, the river became too narrow for the rapid increase in shipping traffic. At the time, Rotterdam was in danger of being cut off from the international shipping. This would have been the end of the city as an international trading hub. The city therefore decided to build a new access canal, the new waterway, a 20 kilometer long canal that replaced the narrow part of the river and could take even the largest ships directly into the port. A mammoth project with workers having to dig through four and a half kilometers of dunes. Problems occurred repeatedly. The freshly dug canal filling with mud and sand. Costs exceeded the budget many times over. In November 1872, after nine years of construction, the first ship finally sailed up the new waterway. Over the new canal, even large steamers could reach Rotterdam comfortably and safely. It made Rotterdam a sought-after destination for ships from all over the world. The old port soon became too small. It was therefore decided to expand it, building the Walhafen to the west. Gradually, more and more port areas were constructed along the canal, where ships could dock via secondary, smaller canals. a concept that brought many benefits. Anchored ships were protected and traffic could sail unhindered along the main canal. Over time, the new waterway was repeatedly deepened. Today, ships with a draft of 15 meters can sail along it, 37 centimeters more than on the Panama Canal. While the legend impresses with its concept as a double port, the modern icon scores points for the conveniently distributed terminals along the canal. The next item in the architecture category, which port is better suited for large ships? In ancient times, it was common to build harbors directly at river mouths to enable connections to inland destinations. But heavy silting was a major disadvantage. To avoid running aground at low tide, large merchant ships had to anchor far out to sea. In Alexandria, on the other hand, all ships could dock in the harbor, regardless of high or low tide. In Alexandria, engineers decided against a direct access route to the Nile, and so avoided the problem of silting. 
water depths of up to 10 meters could then be achieved. Alexandria was considered by far the deepest port of the time. This special feature led to Alexandria becoming the home port of what was then the largest ship in the world, the Syracusia. According to lore, it measured around 100 meters in length and had room for around 2,000 tons of cargo, 2,000 passengers, and 20 horses. This made it five times larger than any other ships of the time. The Syracuse was an engineering masterpiece. But due to her size, the Syracuse's draft was so deep that Alexandria was the only port she could enter. So, after her maiden voyage, she remained there and became a floating palace. In terms of draft, the legendary ancient harbor set new standards. The Syracusia, with its gigantic dimensions, remained unmatched for many years. Ships would only become wider and have taller superstructures over the next one and a half thousand years. As long as ships were built of wood, 100 meters was the magic limit. In the mid-19th century, steel revolutionized shipbuilding. Suddenly, ships of over 200 meters in length were possible. Shipbuilders constantly strive to outdo each other with ever larger ships. Today, container ships measure up to 400 meters with a 17-meter draft when fully loaded. The largest bulk ore freighters can even have drafts of 23 meters. In many ports, the enormous size of ships has become a problem. Port basins and waterways cannot be deepened fast enough. The modern icon reacted to the ever larger ships already in the 60s by reclaiming new land from the North Sea and building one of the largest deep sea terminals in the world, the Masflakta. Water depth is an impressive 24 meters. To achieve this, an artificial island was created on the North Sea coast off the Netherlands, right next to the mouth of the Maas. To build it, workers dredged 50 million cubic meters of sand from the North Sea. Construction took nine years. A mammoth effort, which was worthwhile. Thanks to the Masflakta, Rotterdam became the first port of call in Europe for all the world's major container shipping companies. Rotterdam is the only port in Europe where every ship in the world can enter fully loaded. In fact, demand for moorings became so great that the Port Authority extended the Masflakta by a further 2,000 hectares between the years 2008 and 2014. Today, there are 10 deep water terminals for the world's largest container ships, oil tankers, and ore carriers. In terms of draft, both the legend and the modern icon set new standards. Round three on architecture. Which port has the most efficient layout? The ancient port of Alexandria was divided into different areas, similar to today's modern ports. The eastern port, the Portos Magnus, was divided into four harbor basins. Along the Logias Peninsula, there was the military harbor, prizing two harbor basins, a carefully chosen strategic location. On the half island, there were the royal palace buildings, and right next to them, the camps of the soldiers. The military port also served as a kind of protective shield. It lay behind reefs and was therefore difficult for attackers to access. Its entrances could be locked with iron chains. In addition to the two basins for warships, there were two other harbor basins in the Portus Magnus, providing anchoring mainly for state merchant ships for exporting grain. 
foreign merchant ships had no access to the Portus Magnus. They anchored in the western port, Portus Unostus. The separation had several benefits. The Egyptians could collect taxes more easily, and on top of that, it was kind of a protective measure. One didn't know who exactly was on board on these ships. There could be criminals or people with infectious diseases. Portus Unostus was also home to the inland port, an artificial basin that connected the seaport to the hinterland via canals. Goods destined for the rest of Egypt could then undergo onward transport without any detours. The port of Alexandria was thought out in the smallest detail. In terms of structure and layout, the legend was therefore far ahead of its time. Previously, ships were differentiated only between transport and military vessels. Today, however, every freighter is designed for a specific type of cargo ranging from container ships and ore carriers through to gas tankers. This is what largely determines the layout of the port of Rotterdam. In Rotterdam, there are special terminals for each type of ship. There are 15 container terminals and 26 general cargo terminals, 11 tank terminals for crude oil, and 16 terminals for other liquid goods such as chemicals or gas. Terminals are also available for inland waterway vessels and cruise ships. The terminals for the large container ships from overseas and boat carriers are located at Masflakta and Europort. Only here is there sufficient draft and space to maneuver the freighters, which can be up to 400 meters long. Docking and undocking requires the ships to turn. The Mars Vlakta is unique in its dimensions. Heavy equipment is needed to unload the giant vessels. The cranes are up to 125 meters high and weigh around 1,800 tons, an enormous load for piers and key walls. Engineers therefore used a new construction method for the Mars Vlakta. Foundation plates for the piers were laid two meters below the surface. Earth above the plate acts as a kind of shock absorber and ensures that loads are evenly distributed. So due to this construction method, the piers could support much higher loads than if they were built with a conventional construction method. Terminals for oil and gas are located further inside the port. At special keys, ships pump their cargoes directly via pipelines into large terminal tanks. Close to the city center, in the Old Harbor District, are areas for relatively shallow draft vessels, such as inland waterway vessels and cruise ships. This partitioning of the port saves time during loading and unloading enabling a huge number of goods to be handled. Both the legend and the modern icon are then highly impressive in their layouts. The verdict in the category architecture. While the legend impresses with its size and infrastructure, the strengths of the modern icon lie in its unique depth of draft and highly specialized terminals. The next category in the mega contest concerns logistics. First, which port is best at managing shipping? Around 300 merchant ships headed for the port legend every month, an enormous volume of traffic for the time. One of the biggest challenges was that ships could find the port at all. The compass, sea chart and sextant were not invented until about a thousand years later. Ships therefore usually sailed along the coasts and navigated according to landmarks, such as mountains or large buildings. But Egypt's Mediterranean coast is flat and has no landmarks. From the sea, it is visible only when ships are just a few nautical miles away. 
a major hazard, especially at night, because the coastal waters are full of reefs. Sailors feared the Egyptian Mediterranean coast. To guide ships to the harbor, the Alexandrians decided to build a beacon at the port's entrance. A beacon as the world had never seen before, and which amazed every new arrival. The Tower of Pharos, a 140-meter-high lighthouse. Its beacon shone for an incredible 50 kilometers. It took 20 years to build the world's first lighthouse and cost 800 talents, more than 20,000 kilos of silver, a huge sum for the time. The lighthouse had several functions. It guided ships from the open sea into the port. It marked the entrance to the Portus Magnus, and it demonstrated the wealth of Alexandria through its size and magnificent building materials. The massive tower had three floors. The ground floor measured 30 by 30 meters and 70 meters high. The first floor was octagonal and 34 meters high, with the lighting system located above it. The lighthouse's exterior was completely clad in marble. It looked so incredible that it soon became known worldwide. The Lighthouse of Alexandria absolutely deserves its designation as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. For a thousand years until it collapsed, it safely guided ships from all over the world to the largest port in ancient times. The modern icon relies on state-of-the-art technology to manage ship traffic. Every day, 70 to 80 ships from overseas arrive here, plus around 300 barges. To avoid traffic chaos, every ship movement must be meticulously planned. From two traffic control centers, traffic controllers direct and coordinate shipping traffic 24 hours a day, similar to an airport. For this, they use the so-called HAMIS, the Harbor Management Information System. This communication system enables traffic controllers to accurately predict the courses of ships and to detect and react promptly to congestion and potential collisions. The system also shows them what cargo a ship is carrying and which terminal it should dock at and at what time. With this information, traffic controllers guide every ship meticulously and safely to its designated docking location. The interim verdict. While the port of Alexandria impresses in ship navigation with the world's first lighthouse, the port of Rotterdam guides ships using state-of-the-art technology. The next item in the logistics contest concerns loading and unloading. Which port is most efficient? The main cargo handled in the ancient port of Alexandria was grain. Because of the Nile, Egypt has always been very fertile. Alexander the Great's successors improved cultivation methods so that the country produced far more grain than its population consumed. At peak periods, Egypt exported 250,000 tons of grain per year. First, mainly to Greece, later to the Roman Empire. Rome could supply its entire population with Egyptian grain for up to six months. A major challenge faced by traders and ship owners in ancient times was overseas shipping only being possible in the summer months from mid-April to mid-October due to the weather. The ships of that time were not built for bad weather. They had little to resist, even a light storm. Within a five-month period, around 3,500 ships needed loading with grain. The Egyptians used muscle power rather than technology. Workers required around one week to load a ship with several thousand sacks of grain. In this regard, the legend is ahead. Amphorus were another extremely important cargo in ancient times. 
They served as transport containers for all kinds of goods. Wine, oil, olives, fruit, milk, spices, and fish sauce. The Romans even developed the measuring unit amphora, which corresponded to the amount of 26 liters. What amphoras were 2,000 years ago are now sea freight containers. Invented in the 50s by an American haulage contractor, they have now become indispensable. More than half a billion of these steel boxes now exist on Earth. To load and unload container ships as efficiently as possible, the modern icon relies on state-of-the-art technology. In the latest container terminals, everything functions automatically. Rotterdam was the first port ever to have built an automated terminal. Two of the ultra-modern terminals are now operating in Rotterdam. They are located in the deep sea port on the Maasvlakte. The world's largest container ships dock here around the clock. Once docked, the automated container gantry cranes instantly begin unloading. Up to 50 containers per hour, just one and a half minutes per container. Considering that up to six container bridges per ship are in operation at the same time, this is going to save several hours per ship as opposed to manually controlled container bridges. The control center still uses humans to operate the container gantry cranes and monitor processes in the terminal. At the key, the container gantry cranes load the containers directly from the ship onto AGVs, automatic guided vehicles. These driverless vehicles take the containers to their storage location in the terminal, fully automatically, of course. Special software controls the AGVs via nearly 20,000 transponders embedded in the ground. The AGVs are battery operated. When their batteries are almost empty, they automatically drive to a changeover point. The changeover itself is performed by a robot. In just five minutes, the AGV is ready for operation again. Humans actually only have to intervene in the event of a technical defect. Unloading of the containers at the storage site is also fully automatic. The system enables the giant container ships to be unloaded and reloaded in just 24 to 48 hours. The interim verdict. In Alexandria, loading and unloading was efficient thanks to the efforts and hard work of Egyptian dock workers. And in Rotterdam, thanks to fully automated machines. The third item in the logistics category which port is better connected to the hinterland? The Nile was the main domestic transport route in ancient Egypt. 90% of the goods handled by the port of Alexandria arrived or departed the capital along the river. The Egyptians simply transported everything along the Nile. Grain, fruits, even large blocks of stone for the pyramids. Although the port of Alexandria is not directly located on the Nile, it is still connected to the river. Engineers achieved this by building a network of canals through Alexandria. The three most important ones were the Emperor's Canal, which flowed into the Portus Unostus, the Nefret Canal, which led to the Portus Magnus, and the Shadia Canal, which connected the other two with Lake Maria. Lake Mariat is located behind the city. In ancient times, it covered over 200 square kilometers and was fed by the Nile. Nile ships docked at one of the Mariat harbors, right near the city. Merchants reloaded the goods onto barges, which they then took to the port via the canals. A simple and secure transport route. The word was spread around traders from all over the world.
Only a few decades after the construction of the port, almost all trades from Asia came through Alexandria on their way to Europe. Ivory from India, oils from the Himalayas, and, and exotic animals from all over Asia. The port's connection to the Nile ensured that Alexandria became a global trading hub. Whereas in ancient Egypt, transport was almost exclusively by water. In the port of Rotterdam, a mix of different modes of transport is used. Inland waterway transport has by far the largest share. Via the Rhine, the port is connected to an extensive network of waterways that cover Western, Central, and Eastern Europe. 100,000 barges call the port of Rotterdam every year, transporting more than 150 million tons of goods. That makes up around 33% of the total cargo handle. One barge can transport as much as 90 trucks. Rail plays another important role in goods collection and delivery. Goods mainly destined for or coming from places located further away from the European waterways are transported by rail. Almost 11% of goods, around a million containers per year, arrive or leave the port of Rotterdam by rail. The port's own rail line, the Batuva Line, was built at the end of the 90s. It is 160 kilometers long and runs from the Maasvlakte to the Dutch-German border. The rail line is exclusively for the freight traffic of the port. This makes the port independent from normal train traffic, increasing its capacity many times over. For goods with only short transport routes, trucks are the fastest and most cost-effective option. Here too, everything is streamlined for maximum efficiency. When entering the terminals, drivers receive a chip card indicating where they need to drive to. They can view online whether their container is ready for collection, thereby avoiding congestion at the terminals. The fourth important mode of transporting goods is via pipeline. Rotterdam is the European hub for oil and gas. The terminals pump oil and gas through a total of 1,500 kilometers of pipelines to refineries in the port and throughout Europe. This system of multimodal transportation enables the port to handle 470 million tons of cargo every year. While in the port of Alexandria, the Nile played a decisive role for incoming and outgoing goods, Europe's largest port uses a highly efficient mix of different transport modes. The verdict in the logistics category. The legend impresses with its multitudes of hard-working dock workers and an ingenious connection to the Nile. The modern icon stands out through state-of-the-art technology in every area. The contest continues in the category features. Item one, which port has the most groundbreaking innovations? Alexandria was the Silicon Valley of antiquity. The city's university and library were famous all over the world. The library, which exists today only as a replica, was considered to be the largest and most extensive of the ancient world. To assemble their collection, the Alexandrians resorted to drastic means. Officials seized every document on foreign merchant ships, with owners only receiving back a copy. The original remained in the library. It is estimated that the Library of Alexandria once held up to half a million papyrus scrolls. The library attracted the greatest academics of the time. Medical instruments and numerous mechanical devices were invented in Alexandria. 
academics in Alexandria were also familiar with optical laws and the dynamics of light. They used this knowledge to build the world's first and largest lighthouse. Its light could be seen from a distance of 50 kilometers. But how did they do it? One important factor was the height of the tower. The curvature of the Earth limits visibility at ground level to a few hundred meters. The higher an object is, the greater the distance from which it can be seen. The other important factor was the beacon. A powerful light beam was important at night and in bad weather. In Egypt, wood was scarce. A big fire as a source of light was therefore out of the question. A new way of making light was needed. The solution was to use huge concave mirrors made of polished bronze. These focused the sunlight and exited it at a higher brilliance. At night, an oil fire served as the light source, whose glow was also reflected by the concave mirrors. Not only was the lighthouse an incredible innovation because of its mirror system, it was also considered to be one of the tallest buildings on Earth up until the Eiffel Tower was built. Because of its technological innovation, the Lighthouse of Alexandria became a model for all other lighthouses in the world. The Port of Rotterdam also pursues innovation and supports startups working on ideas to improve port operations. One of these startups is Ramlab. The company prints on-demand spare parts for ships in the port using a 3D metal printer, a concept unique in the world. Normally you cast the parts. Since they often come from China, this can take six months. Taking a ship out of service for long periods costs the shipping company millions. 3D metal printers can make the required spare parts within a few days. Using arc welding, the printer melts metallic wires and applies them layer by layer to form the desired shape. Another key advantage of the parts from the printer is that they're lighter and cheaper than cast parts. The company has even printed a ship's complete propeller weighing 400 kilograms. Ship parts from the 3D printer is just one of many technologies that make Rotterdam the most modern port in the world. Interim verdict. In innovation and new technology, legend and icon set new standards. The second contest in the features category which port is the better industrial location? Where today skyscrapers stand in the port of Alexandria was the location for multitudes of shipyards more than 2,000 years ago. Ships in ancient times were made entirely out of wood. Compared to modern ships, they often had to be repaired and maintained. The shipyards were fully occupied, especially during the winter months when shipping wasn't possible. The sailmakers' order books were also always full. The large merchant ships had no space for oarsmen, so were dependent on sail. Sails were therefore extremely valuable. It happened quite often that a captain would pawn his reserve sail. So when there was a storm and the mainsail broke, those ships would drift on the sea for weeks. The Egyptians were not only skillful sailmakers, the city's market was also located directly at the port. Craftsmen processed imported raw materials here and sold their finished products back to sea traders. The top exports were incense products. Traders bought raw materials in the south of Arabia, brought it to Alexandria, and processed it into incense mixtures and ointments. Incense was so expensive that workers were only allowed to enter the factories naked, so they certainly couldn't steal anything. 
Textiles, jewelry, and pots were other important export goods. Workshops located near the port saved traders transport costs and ensured plenty of interested customers. While in Alexandria, goods were mainly being produced for export. Companies in the port of Rotterdam mainly process incoming raw materials. The most important industrial sectors are refineries and chemical plants. Tankers alone deliver more than 100 million tons of crude oil to Rotterdam every year. This makes the port the largest oil processing hub in the world. The oil comes from drilling platforms in the North Sea, the Middle East, and Russia. Huge tankers then take it to Rotterdam. All major oil companies in the world have their own refineries in Rotterdam. While one half of the crude oil flows directly to Europe via pipelines, the other half ends up in the port's refineries and chemical plants, where it is refined into fuel and chemical products. But crude oil is not the only product being processed in Rotterdam. A large part of the orange juice sold in Europe is delivered and bottled in Rotterdam. 25% of the global orange harvest comes from Brazil, where they are harvested, washed, and squeezed into juice. Water is removed from the juice, creating a product seven times more concentrated, thereby saving transport space. Deep frozen, this concentrate makes its way to Europe in tankers. Filling takes place directly in the port of Rotterdam. Processing at Rotterdam of oil or orange juice saves immensely on storage and transport costs. A billion dollar business for the companies. The verdict on industrial locations. While the legend impresses with craft businesses, it is the chemical and oil companies that provide turnover and cargo handling for the modern icon. The third item in the logistics category. How safe is the port in a mega storm? Storms are among the greatest hazards to shipping. The Egyptians knew this and did everything they could to protect the port of Alexandria and ships from storms. The design of the double harbor with the Hepta Stadium played a major role here. Due to the offshore island and the Hepta Stadium, the Portus Magnus was especially well protected from the sea. Being more open, Portus Unostus was not as well protected. If a storm was approaching, ships would be towed from this part of the harbor through the canals in the Hepta Stadium into the Portus Magnus to get them out of harm's way. For additional protection, the Alexandrians also built breakwaters in front of the port entrances. This required workers to sink huge blocks of stone into the sea, piling them up to create a wall structure that extended to just above the water's surface. A wave hitting the wall then breaks up, losing much of its energy and no longer being such a danger. Even during strong winter storms, the port and the ships were well protected. However, in the year 365, a strong earthquake off the coast of Greece led to a tsunami. A massive wall of water raced across the Mediterranean towards the Egyptian coast. The tsunami wave was one of the largest in human history. The historian Amanus Marcellinus writes that ships were pushed all the way on land up to two miles inland or they landed on the roofs of houses. The tsunami largely destroyed Alexandria and its legendary port. It took many years to rebuild everything. However, even then, no reliable protection against a new megastorm ever existed. Rotterdam and its port were also hit by a huge storm 2,000 years later. 
This was the biggest flood disaster of the 20th century. No one had expected the storm to be that strong. A gigantic storm surge in the North Sea killed almost two and a half thousand people. The government then started a huge flood protection project. Along with nearly 100 kilometers of new dams, they also built a barrier at the mouth of the new waterway, the Maslantkaring. It was to protect the port and the city center from flooding in the event of another storm surge. The challenge was to build a structure that would protect the harbor in an emergency, but it wouldn't obstruct shipping traffic in everyday life. A barrier was built with two arched gates, each 22 meters high and 210 meters long. The entire structure is made of three times as much steel as the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Its special feature is that, at normal water levels, the gates remain in dry docks on the shore. Ships can then pass unhindered. In the event of an impending surge, a computer automatically closes the gates. The docks are then flooded, the gates float up and swing across the new waterway. The barrage can stop flood waves five meters high. During a storm surge, the harbor is well protected. Whether the barrier would also provide protection against a tsunami is uncertain. State-of-the-art technology means the modern icon is much better equipped to withstand a mega storm than the legend. The verdict in the logistics category. In terms of innovation and industry, the ancient port easily keeps up with its modern day opponent. But when it comes to storm safety, only the icon can deliver. More than 2,000 years lie between the construction of the ancient port of Alexandria and its modern day contender, the port of Rotterdam. Both can accommodate the largest ships and are far superior to all ports in terms of cargo handling and innovations. Even today, the port of Alexandria remains famous for its gigantic lighthouse. And all over the world, the port of Rotterdam is considered the harbor of the future.